This is Leisha Holmes and I'm your host on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast brought to you by Hoxo Media and I'm beyond thrilled to invite to our channel today a very inspiring business leader who I'm thrilled to introduce to you as our listener. This is Natasha Makijani and she's the group CEO and founder of Oliver Sanderson. Welcome to you today Natasha, how are you? Thank you Leisha, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, I'm very pleased to hear it. I'm very pleased to see you got the blue memo. For those who are watching on YouTube, we're both wearing very nice blue dresses. But for those who are listening, well, you can't see that. So how are, how are things with you as we record this now? Everything's fine. Obviously, we've been coming out of lockdown and it's actually really exciting. Uh, the search and recruitment market is moving. So it's a, a really exciting place to be at the moment and everything's very positive. And I think uh, the UK is looking at a sort of a positive light moving onwards. I think so, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, we obviously connected through the Recruiter magazine, which is very exciting. And one of the reasons that I wanted to bring you to our community and our audience is because as a business leader, you're very inspiring. And we're going to talk about that sort of provenance today and how you've achieved your, you know, the inspirational leadership that you've got in your business, but also around diversity and inclusion. And uh, got some very interesting questions coming along. So for those who are not yet familiar with Oliver Sanderson, tell us a little bit about your business and how you've reached this point. So Oliver Sanderson, we're a search and selection business and we've been running since 2011 and we have three different divisions uh, under Oliver Sanderson Group PLC and one is Oliver Sanderson Perm, we have our Just Interims business and then we have our OS Innovation space. Um, I started the business over 10 years, just over 10 years ago um, and I've been in the search market for now over 20 years, so graduate from Hayes. Uh, top biller there and then went to Michael Page again a top biller there in Michael Page HR and did a lot with Michael Page exec in my last few years and then I moved on and decided I wanted to set up my own exec search and selection business and so Oliver Sanson was born. We specialize in board level appointments um, across the permanent and interim market for the FTSE 100, FTSE 250 and we're expanding out to the Fortune 500 next year in the USA as well just to give you a bit of an overview of who we are and what we do. That's very exciting. And uh, I think I said to you offline a little bit earlier on, we've uh, got a very nice growing community over in America. So hopefully we'll have people listening from there that are interested to know more about how you can partner them, which is a very a great snapshot of uh, your provenance. And can I just say as a, as a off the record, um, you don't look like you've been in recruitment for 20 years, that's for sure. So we'd like to know what your skincare <laughs> regime is because you look fantastic. You really do. Um, Thank some, you. Something's keeping you young, but I guess it's all the fitness that we talked about offline as well. So in terms of your leadership style, obviously, so you've, you've walked the walk you've been very successful yourself so talk to me talk to me about how you've led your business through certainly the last 18 months in the pandemic how's things been for you so I think with the pandemic, we had to become more agile and innovative in how we worked with our employees. Obviously, um, for some employees, it's quite isolating as well, working. And, you know, I've got one or two that actually work from home and um, live on their own. And it does affect them emotionally and mentally. So it is from our perspective, one was to be flexible working, looking at agile ways of working. One of the things that we did as a team is that we set up fitness classes um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays for our employees, which we paid for which was on zoom but they've got a trainer that they can tap into those classes if they wanted to um we also got them all an individual mentor so um they've all got mentors from and i'm working with apps go on that where they have mentors individually to help them develop um and then from our side of things it was about making sure that we could digitally work together as a team so there are times when i'll spend time individually with each of my teams but uh with each individual but there will be times when um we as a team will log in together and just be working on our computers and having those conversations. I think the other thing that we also did in lockdown, which has been quite agile, is around um, lunches, so Zoom lunches. So what I do is send them out uh, the ab ability to order up to, say, £30 worth of food, and they'd, they, they'd get a takeaway and some drinks, and we'd have a lockdown lunch or a lockdown dinner, uh, which was quite, you know, interesting and quite exciting, and sometimes cook-alongs. So there's quite a few things that we did as a business to make it agile. Um, and then, to be honest with you, we, we encourage our employees to become founders um, and business owners, so in the sense that we offer equity on performance, and the idea is to bring them to the table, to give them a voice, so actually encourage them to tell you what they want and what's enjoyable for them. So it's been a combination of, you know, flexible working, building an inclusive culture, also celebrating um, cultural days. So if they're from different backgrounds, again, we celebrate every cultural day that it exists within that space so that we're all inclusive. Um, and I think it's just about 
caring really to be honest with you I think that's the biggest thing just Mm -hmm. taking 10 minutes to say hi how's your day before you start talking about what your to-do list is and and what your business meeting is I love it I mean gosh listening to everything that you've said there Natasha it just sounds a really holistic approach Um, I'd like to pick up on a couple of points there one in particular is the mentorship I mean to to actually think that you know you would bring in somebody externally for each individual person and you know I've not heard of many leaders that have actually done that for their teams because you're creating a very sort of objective impartial view for them going forward and then the other thing I want to pick up on is, is the last point you just made around that sort of equity piece that you're creating business owners of their own sort of desk if you like I, I absolutely love that I think it's a, a very uh, simple and yet effective way to make your business very unique which again for a lot of our listeners you know what are you doing to make yourself stand out as an employer of choice which is your EVP well you've just defined it there in a very succinct few minutes as an introduction so bravo to you it's, it's very remarkable and um, you, you are obviously you know one of the main reasons I wanted to get you on today is to talk about diversity and inclusion so talk to us about where where that as a business where that's kind of transcended over the last few years and where you're at now in terms of your um, technology so with regards to diversity and inclusion um, and our DNI offering um, around that space, obviously, personally, I'm an Asian female CEO and coming into industry from my personal experience in industry, in the corporate world, and then setting up all of a sense, and I've had a lot of lived experiences myself. And so it was really important for me to DNI is pivotal, not just to me, but to the business and how we how we shortlist and how we work with clients going forward. So I guess being a Bay Asian woman in the recruitment industry, going head to head with male counterparts, having to stand my ground and make sure that my brand stood out um, and attracting the right talent for my business has been pivotal and, and interesting. So Oliver Sanderson as a business, what we've done from an, a DNI perspective is what DNI, it's actually um, at the heart of our search processes. So it's from shortlisting programs right through to consultancy work and helping clients to build a more inclusive and improved representation and culture. So what we actually do as a business is we work with organizations to assess not from just the shortlisting, but creating of job packs, creating of the the methods, the values, and how we go about looking at that shortlisting. Um, But recently, for example, we had a client that wanted to recruit a HR director what from um, a BAME or you know uh, other backgrounds and it's not just necessarily just BAME it's also looking at gender race equality sexual orientation so it's actually bringing all of that together to make sure it's inclusive so when we are looking at as a business how can we ensure that all of our processes and our shortlisting and our methodology it adheres to ensuring the right diverse shortlist is delivered we look at things like Uh, communication cultural change and the shortlisting process and we produce reports to then go back to the customer to say this is what we bring around dni and and this is how we deliver from an internal point of view dni is about building an inclusive culture for my own employees to make sure that they feel that they are included in not just uh the the experience that they have working for oliver sanderson but also the experience that they have of um that they have of shortlisting with our customers. So working with clients to build the right strategy moving forward. I mean, recently the example is we had um, another client that wanted a regional managing director based in the Northeast and they wanted people of fame quality um, from mixed backgrounds and they wanted a, a very strong diverse shortlist. And what we did is we ensured that we looked at candidates that would relocate we looked at people from all different industry sectors. Um, they wanted people in the construction sector, which is quite a tough market to in the Northeast to bring somebody um, because it is also geographically driven as well. So, so it's a combination of that from a diversity point of view. Yeah, no, definitely. Thinking more creatively, I think it's wonderful. So it's absolutely inherent right from the starting point when you're having that educational conversation with a client, but also making sure, and I think it's really important that you're doing it yourselves. It starts with you, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and in addition from the the DNI perspective, one of the other areas is that we've actually got uh, we've actually gone digital. So we've brought digital convergence and technology together. Um, so what we've actually launched we've we've launched the Oliver Sanderson Executive App, 
Um, but with Oliver Sanson, we have got a sister company called Snap CV, where we've actually launched a mobile job app with CD search functionality. And one of them is uh, one of the processes of that is Amazon Alexa. And on Amazon Alexa, um, from a diversity point of view, we are actually looking at ways of, di of diversity and social mobility for candidates for job applications, which I can go into Snap in a bit more detail later. But it's we've been really interesting of bringing convergence technology and traditional search together to um to create and look at how we can look at social mobility and diversity in in different ways and then we are also launching a charity which i can come on to in a bit we're going to definitely come back to charity but let's talk about this convergence now but I'm not, i can't say that smart speaker's name because otherwise she will start talking to me because she's in the room where i'm recording this so talk to us talk to us about that, that that's incredible talk to us about the technology so basically, um, Snap CV uh, basically is the one stop solution that enhances your recruitment processes. And about two and a half years ago, myself, one of my founders realized that there was a gap in the market. So it's a separate company, but it's part of the group. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's, it's our sister company. And what Snap CV does is, is that we've got um, from job application to candidate attraction to uh, posting mini sites and microsites where you post the vacancies, where then the candidate CV goes through 60 second video where they answer five key questions about themselves. It goes straight through to the hiring manager. And then what happens is the resourcing team at the other end pick up those candidates and then they decide which ones they want to interview. They then send it to something called Snapping View, where you do what we call, where we have video interviewing, where they can do a pre-recorded video interviewing and it could be 15 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then they answer a number of questions and that goes through to the hiring team. Then that score them and decide in a snap whether they're right for that whether they're right for that particular vacancy one thing we've done with snap cv we've got the rights to snap cv and snap resume globally and we added a functionality which is really interesting around voice technology and this is the exciting thing this is where the recruitment market is going so we've actually gone on to amazon alexa and we own the skill find me a job and this has this is basically 100 million devices worldwide and every smart tv that's produced in the world as of january 2021 uh, basically has a, a built-in amazon alexa from now on and so basically you say to amazon alexa alexa find me a job she will and, or find me a marketing job in london for example she will then talk to you and tell you about the, sport, the top 40 marketing jobs in london that exist you can then have those emailed to your inbox or you can actually go through them on the screen, either on the TV or on your actual Amazon Alexa where she's talking. If you think about it from a disability point of view, um, if somebody's got vision impairment, it's a great way from job search point of view. One of the things we have had and the exciting things is we currently have 250,000 jobs listed across the UK and the US. And we have between the UK and the US over 14 million candidates in the UK and 11 million candidates in the US for CV search on Amazon Alexa. So it's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, recently we had in the last two months, uh, without much advertising, we had over 90,000 hits in two months where people have actually downloaded and used uh, the, search, the CV search functionality using voice technology. So we're now going for Series A funding. We've gone global. It's really exciting. And we're in talks with a number of vice, you know, VCs uh, across the US and the UK uh, to take it to the next level. So, so it's a really exciting project at hand. Absolutely. I mean, that's just blown my mind. But, you know, even as you're talking about it, I'm thinking you've heard it. I'm hoping you've heard it here first. Maybe you've told other people on podcasts, but that is absolutely incredible because you're absolutely right. Everything's smart. You know, you're talking to your TV, your TV remote control. It'll bring up a, a, a program that you want to watch. We talk to our smart speakers all the time. You know, what's the temperature? Set me an alarm. Order me a takeaway. Why not find me a job? I think it's incredible. You are really inspiring, Natasha. That's incredible. Thank you. We, we are really excited. And I, I have to say, I'm one of the co-founders. It's not just me. It is all of our founders. So Ash and the team at Snap. So I've got to give them credit too. Yeah. And, then our, and then our NEDs as well. But it is, but it is, we're part of the journey and it's a really exciting place to be. Great. And we'll make sure that when we share this episode, we'll get you to tell us who to tag on the episode that they get the recognition as well, because that is really quite remarkable. So you mentioned a few moments ago uh, this diversity charity. So tell us all about that, because that's, again, something that is really quite a powerful thing that you're doing. So one of the things I realised um, 
being an Asian woman and having a platform. And I think this year has really been our year this year and last year. And I think COVID has made a number of people share ideas and concepts. So I have always wanted to launch something in the space around DI and i um, and around race equality and, and other areas. And so I was talking to um, a group HR, ex-group HR director called Norman Pickavance, who's the ex-group HRD of Morrison's and Angela Williams, who is the uh, HR director of post office. And I said, I want to launch something exciting and I want to do something different and so we came up with a concept and we've been working with a number of HR directors in this space so so what we're launching and it launches in exactly about six weeks time so we go fully live um, and then then we'll be able to talk about it in more depth but just to give you an idea um, we're actually launching a charity on race equality um, the first the first specific area we're looking at is something called black which is the black leadership advisory council and what we're looking at is the fact that uh, black leadership at board level and in the boardroom across corporate the corporate world in the FTSE 250 FTSE 500 fortune 500 is limited and how do we look at emerging talent to get there so a lot of people are saying that um, there is a lack of people in the boardroom of, of black and of ethnic origin. And what we've kind of thought about is the fact that absolutely that exists, but how are we going to bring about impact and change? And one of the things that we think is that HR specifically um, have an ability to influence and work with those boards and with those CEOs across the across industry. So what we're looking at is working with these HR directors um, on the account So we've got the trustees coming on board, plus the council founder members. Um, and there's about eight of us now at the moment. Um, and what we're doing is we're gonna launch as a collective, their opinion, their mission, their values on what that stands for and how we can bring about an impact change. So one is emerging talent and then two it, and how do you nurture it? How do you onboard it? And then how do you take it to the next level? Um, and the facility around the charity will be about raising funds to look at things like we've identified the talent, but now how do we coach that talent to get to the next level? So, for example, you're sort of at the sort of, you know, you're a third job, but perhaps you're in that space, you're on the, the high talent list. You think you're going to go further, but for some reason, you may perhaps been overlooked in the past. Now, how do we do that? And how do HR help influence that? So it's a really exciting charity. Um, and we've still got a long way to go in the next sort of six weeks we launch. And uh, once we launch, I will be able to go into a bit more detail exactly of what the collective opinions are. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I hope by the time we share this episode, you'll be able to do that. It's absolutely remarkable. And I think, you know, your own personal testimony will make you uh, very empathetic, but it's uh, it's definitely something that I think needs to shift and change. And people have got so much rhetoric about it, but you're actually doing something for the benefit of, of everybody. You know, we've all got to think about inclusivity and uh, how we can support one another. It's absolutely remarkable, Natasha. I don't know how you have time to do all this and a day job. Well, I think it's just about balance. So it's about finding finding the time to balance. Um, I am pretty dedicated. Um, I am pretty, um, I guess, very focused. Uh, but I think it's also a just about being, um, you know, putting things into categories and boxes and then actually believing that you have achieved something that day. Because I used to be, when I was younger, it was about actually I need to achieve everything on my to-do list. And it's not actually you've achieved six things, you should smile. And and, and I think with uh, experience and, uh, you know, you learn and you realise. And you've, got sort of good, you've clearly got a very good team around you. That's the key thing as well, isn't it? That you're not trying to do all this by yourself. You've got a, clearly a very supportive yeah. team yeah. around you. That's really important. Well, yes, ab- yeah. it, it's so yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, anyone that's listening, whether you are a fledgling business owner or whether you're somebody like Natasha, who, you know, is, you know been around doing, doing your sector for, for a long while, but you want to do something, you want to give something back, please do feel free to reach out to Natasha. Make sure you follow all the different elements that we're going to be sharing on the episode today. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, Natasha. We're really, really grateful to you for joining us on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast. Fantastic. It was lovely catching up with you. And thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you.